G'day and welcome back. Thanks for coming. The last two episodes you saw me hump unmanageable lengths of rough sawn timber around my workshop. I docked them to more manageable lengths and I also ripped them to manageable widths or widths closer to the dimensions I needed. You then saw me dress that rough sawn timber. I finished milling up the frame stock for my workbench. The bench stock is still in its, well, it's still away from, um, from where I need it to be. And I don't mind that because the frame stock and the bench top stock can be different profiles. But so long as they all fit together, everything will be sweet in the end. Before me is the fruits of my labor. Labor. What I have here is I have the, fra the frame stock for my workbench. I've ran them through the uh, thicknesser and the, the, the planer and the jointer, got all my faces square, all my uh, faces true and perpendicular, all my edges square. I'm not entirely sure of the final profile. It's roughly 100 by 50, 2 by 4, but it doesn't really matter so long as it is the same. I've also included some swear stock. That stock that I will use when I make a mistake. And I can't fix that mistake in any other way. When that happens, I call upon Samuel's powerful utterance. That word that rhymes with truck. Now, I said earlier that the bench legs will be made out of laminated stock and the legs will be attached to each other with a set of long rails, four of them, and four short rails. Though they will be attached to the top of the, the they will be attached to the bench top and the bench legs top and bottom. There will be a style on the long rails that will support the middle of the uh, the midpoint of the bench, and there will also be two spreaders, two on the bottom, two on the top, to support to maintain the squareness of the frame. There will also be a piece of 18 millimeter or three quarter banana plywood mounted to the bottom of the bench to spread the load when I put a dolly or jacks underneath the bench to lift it and move it. I don't want any of my, uh, my joins failing because they're point loaded with all the mass on top of it. Okay, the joinery I'm going to use for the framework of this bench is the Domino Joinery System, which is a system developed by Festool. I'm going to use two sizes and two lengths of dominoes. The reason why it's called dominoes is because it looks very much like a domino. The lengths I'm going to use is eight millimeter thick, so that thickness, eight millimeters, and uh, about 50 millimeters long. I'm also going to use the larger 10 millimeter by 100 millimeter dominoes. Now, the domino system is the best of both worlds between a mortise and tenon and a biscuit joint. What you, what you do is you machine a pocket into the timber. It's elongated. It's an, uh, basically an elongated hole to a particular depth. In this case, I'm using 30 millimeter depth or thereabouts. And really what it develops is a small floating tenon, tenon joint. Now, the great thing about these things is that they are much more stronger and more accurate than your standard biscuit joint which uses a little which uses a little plate if you machine a pocket in there you'll put a plate through here and it will uh it will do a similar job the domino does this job better and it's easier to machine than a 
easier to make than a mortise and tenon joint. It also stops the timber from moving against each other and twisting and moving up and down against each other. No need to invoke Samuel's powerful utterance just yet, but I've made my first major mistake or my first real mistake for this project. What I did was drill the holes in the wrong spot. So I've, I can fix it. I don't need to get stuck into my swear stock yet. What I've done is I've put in dominoes in the wrong holes. I will cut them off with a flush cut saw, clean up the face. Seeing as though this is on the inside, you won't actually see it uh, in the final project. The other issue I have is that I've drilled six domino pockets in each piece of timber. Now, that's going to make it way, way strong. Like Brick supermarket strong, in fact, brick supermarket that can withstand the, a, uh, a nuclear attack strength. The issue that I have is that these dominoes, these domino pockets, are not millimetre perfect. So, and the, and the dominoes don't actually uh, align all that, all that greatly. That was again my inexperience of using this machine and again I can repair it. So that's the situation. I'm going to have a caffeinated beverage and a sit down and then I'm going to get this thing sorted out.
Okay, it's the next morning. Last night I glued up two of the legs, laminated two of the legs, and by once I did that, I basically ran out of clamps and ran out of alertness. So I decided discretion is the better part of valor. I will finish uh, finish the work off today. So today I've got two more legs to glue up. I have to clean these up and then I have to get all four legs to the correct dimension. Boy, it'd be not nice to have a workbench right about now. What I'm doing is I'm using my paring chisel to clean up most of the glue out, uh, squeeze out on this, um, on this leg. I don't want it, I'm not going to get it perfectly sweet. In fact, I'll actually redress the, the two short faces of the, of the leg on, um, on a jointer and a thicknesser just to get everything square and true again. Um, so yeah, I've done, um, this is the last one. You'll have to excuse my, I'm trying to do a different, different thing where um, I do things while I narrate and I hope it does a good enough job. All I'm doing is I'm just scraping, sometimes a little bit of timber comes off as well but that's okay. I'm just scraping the majority of the glue, the glue off it so I can, so it uh, sits easily, more easily on the jointer bed. Timber does is an organic product, as you know, and it do, and it will move. So I was expecting having to uh, having to remachine these, which is the reason why I left left the timber oversize. If I machined it down to the exact dimension that my plans, which is in my head, might I might add. Then, after this second stint of machining and uh, and truing up, the thing will be smaller than it than it um, needs to be. Leaving it larger means that I won't have uh, have any issues with um, two spindly legs. I've basically built this, designed this workbench, as I said, to be brick supermarket strong um, and that's uh, and that's intentional and my other views is why turn wood into sawdust when you don't actually have to so if it's a little bit larger if the stock is a little bit larger well that's good it gives me room to maneuver redesign address any issues that I have in the future which will result in me having less instances or less requirements for me to call upon Samuel's powerful utterance. So once I finish cleaning up this leg it will be time to flush cut the dominoes in the leg that I came very close to completely stuffing up, getting those flush and gluing up and gluing that up. Once that, that's done I'll have four laminated pieces of timber for leg stock and then I can start building or building the frame. Unfortunately, well not unfortunately, this is a fair bit of work I've this is my sixth day of working on this straight. I am doing, um, obviously I do chores around, around my house. Um, but this is what I'm, I've been working on predominantly. So, I'll now set up the time lapse camera and show you uh, how I'm going to flush cut those, um, those dominoes and clean that surface up. And, um, We'll uh, call it there. Um, we'll call it a day at that episode. So, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. 
and um, see you on the flip side.